Welcome back to the 12th episode in creating a third person controller. If this is your first time seeing this, check the description for the entire playlist if you want to follow from the beginning. Today we are going to be linking the camera FOV action that we made a few lessons ago to the sprint state that we made last week. And we're going to be doing it with signals. Before we dive in, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Want instant access to the full course? Join as a channel member or support me as a Patreon to unlock every episode right away. Prefer a one-time purchase? Grab the complete course on Udemy. You'll get lifetime access plus all future updates. Links are below. Now let's jump in. Let's have a look at setting up the FOV change in the camera to link to be linked to the sprint. Now it's actually pretty straightforward. Um, we're going to do it with a signal. And so we'll come into the sprint script and I'll type signal and it'll just be called sprint started. And there'll be another signal too, and it'll be called sprint ended. Okay, so those are the two signals. Um, they'll be over here on the right hand side. Uh, but first, let's just work on the emission before we link them up. So obviously sprint started pretty straightforward. We want to put that in the enter function. So we can go um, sprint started dot emit. And that's all we have to do there. So we'll just emit that off to the camera to say, hey, we're in the sprint. Let's change the FFA. Now for the ended, we do have that exit function, right? Um, that we made that we made uh, in the um, state class. I'll just put pass here. So you can see that this exists, right? Um, it goes all the way back to state. We have a virtual function here um, that we can use. Uh, that would be called when you exit a state. However, right now we are going from uh, sprint into sprint jump. And if we were going into sprint jump, we wouldn't actually want to uh, call the sprint ended signal. Uh, we wouldn't want to emit the sprint ended signal because, well, we haven't finished sprinting yet. And I think it would be disorientating to change the FOV before you hit the ground. So, Instead, we can just emit it every time that we know that we're exiting the sprint state. So here we have released the sprint key. So sprint has ended. So we can go sprint ended dot emit. And here we are no longer providing input, the exact same sprint ended dot emit. Now, there is actually a way out of sprint that doesn't involve exiting to run or idle. And that is by pressing the jump key, we go to the sprint jump. and Sprint jump, there's only one way out of this and it goes to sprint fall, which also can go back to obviously run or idle. So it actually needs to have the identical signal sprint ended. It doesn't need a sprint started because there's no way for us to enter into uh, a sprint fall or a sprint jump without going through the uh, sprint state. So we get the sprint ended signal and we know here we're going to run so we can go um, sprint ended dot emit and then same with the idle sprint ended dot emit okay so now we can just connect those signals to the camera i'll go to node here and we've got sprint started and sprint ended i'll start with sprint started since you only need to do that once so when i click on the camera node here this is how you hook up a signal um and here we've got on sprint sprint started uh and that is fine for this one so we'll connect that and here it'll take you it's a little bit disorientating but it'll take you to the camera script the camera script and now on sprint sprint started we can just say enter sprint we can just call enter sprint right press enter there okay and you'll see this little green arrow to indicate that there is a signal linked to that function okay so sprint ended a little bit different. We want to click the camera and I'm going to suggest that we just go on sprint ended for this one. Um, and the reason for this is because we're going to link it to two signal calls. So we're just going to call exit um, sprint. Okay. And then in the sprint fall, we're going to have a sprint ended here. We click on that. And now you know that the function name, uh, the receiver method as it's called is called on sprint ended. So we can just delete this on sprint for sprint ended um, and then click connect. You could also just connect each 
signal up. I just like to keep it a little neater. So there's just one receiver function. Um, you could also just link directly to exit sprint and enter sprint if you wanted to, that would be fine too. I, that's uh, perhaps a little bit too confusing though. So we've got the two here on sprint started on sprint ended. So we've got all of that hooked up. So now when we hit the shift key, uh, we can, we should uh, change the FOV and we still, I'm just going to come back up here. We do have those committed out. So we're not going to get a uh, double up. Not that it would matter too much, I don't think. And so now we can see when we run, when we release and let's just test out the jumping. And it's when we land is when we uh, go back into that and not when we, and not, not if we're still holding up the, sh the, the sprint key. So that looks all like it's working how we want it to. I was also thinking um, for this, I wanted to try this. this is a bit outside of the notes, but I wanted to set direction here so that we update the um, uh, direction so that we can actually test to see if direction, direction is equal to vector 2.0 because right now we're going to run to idle. This is um, not super important right now, but uh, for the animations, it it will be important because we're going to have a bunch of transitions and different things like that. So that way we'll go back to idle, um, which is pretty important for our animations. All right, guys, that is all for this week. What are we doing next week? Uh, next week, we're going to put a limit on how much this character can sprint because no one can run that fast forever. If you're finding this series helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. If you want to get access to every single episode, and there's like 60 of them, then you can become a channel member, or you can join the Patreon. And if you don't want to pay the monthly fee, but you do want to get access to the course, you can buy it outright on Udemy. The link's in the description. All right, that's all for now. I'll see you all next week.